coaxial cylinders we are going to find out the potential similar way for the coaxial cylinders so we have two cylinders which are inserted one by one so you have one cylinder over which another cylinder is there okay you have one cylinder over which another cylinder is there and this is your uh, the potential complex potential for the first cylinder is phi 1 the complex potential for the second cylinder is phi 2 and we are going to find out the potential in between is it okay like what we did in the for the parallel plates find the potential phi between two coaxial uh, conducting cylinders extending to infinity as you have done for the parallel plates on both ends in figure and kept the potential phi 1 and phi 2 so laplacian for the polar coordinates is given by this it depends on both r and theta so for cylinder three dimension we have to go with r theta r rho theta phi okay r r theta phi cylindrical coordinates there are three coordinates in three dimension that will be rho theta phi sometimes in some other book it will be uh, read as r theta phi okay but here we are talking about only two dimension laplace equation two dimension complex number is nothing but x plus iy it's a two dimension or not plane it's a two dimension one so that's why r and theta in some other big some other book you may find as rho and theta phi will not be there so your del squared phi is given by this which is equal to zero laplace in equation and we are going to uh, consider d squared phi by d theta squared equal to zero we are going to consider only the radial part alone so this equation becomes d squared phi by dr squared plus 1 by r d phi by dr equals 0 this can be written as phi double prime is it okay this can be written as phi double prime this can be written as phi single prime phi prime so this equation is written as phi double prime plus 1 by r phi prime equals 0 any doubt you just bring just take this term to that side and you bring phi prime to left hand side that will give you phi double prime divided by phi prime which is equal to minus 1 by r is it okay simple the one step is missing i repeat you just take this term to that side that will give you minus 1 by r phi prime you just bring phi prime to left hand side that will give you phi double prime divided by phi prime which is equal to minus 1 by r now integrate on both sides so integrating will give you phi double prime divided by phi prime dr which is equal to minus integration 1 by r dr so integration on both sides only with dr because it varies only with radial radial distance radial part so dr is it okay now we know that phi double prime is equal to equals phi prime by dr we know already phi double prime equals d phi prime by dr you cross multiply so that will give you d phi prime by no d phi prime equals phi double prime dr is it okay i repeat phi double prime equals d phi prime by dr you cross multiply so d phi double prime equals phi phi double prime dr so this is uh, d phi prime which is equal to phi double prime dr so phi double prime dr can be written as d phi prime so d phi prime divided by phi prime which is equal to the same thing okay now we are going to integrate so we are going to integrate i have written the same thing we are going to integrate dx by x that will give you integration that will give you ln x so similarly d phi prime by phi prime that will give you ln phi prime which is equal to when you are going to integrate that answer will be minus ln r plus integration constant a is there here ln is there natural log is there here also ln is there so we will have to take only uh, constant as ln okay so this will give you minus ln r plus ln a is it okay now raise on both sides with, with e exponential so that will give you e to the power ln pi which is equal to the formula is ln a minus ln b will be ln a by b so ln a by b we know we know already log a minus log b will be log a by b so that will give you ln a by r exponential under ln will get cancel so you will have phi prime which is equal to a by r 
Now again you just integrate on both sides with dr. So integrating on both sides will give you phi which is equal to a ln r plus b. So that's the solution here. Phi equals a ln r plus b. That's the solution. That's the solution for the potential, any potential which is inside the inside two coaxial cylinders having potentials phi 1 and phi 2. Okay, so your uh, analytic function f of r equals a ln r plus b, a and b are determined by the proper boundary condition values and u on cylinders. So hence f of r is given as a ln r plus b. Okay, if b is a conjugate harmonic function of u, then v of x comma y is constant. The lines of course are straight lines through 0, 0 origin and u x comma y is a constant equipotential curves. So v is nothing but your lines of force and u is nothing but equipotential. Combination of these two will give you complex potentials. So now the third application. So potential in an annular region. So we have uh, some disk will be there at the annular region. So what we call this is annular region. Find the potential phi between the conducting plates which are kept at the potential phi 1 lower plate and phi 2 the another plate which makes an angle alpha. The alpha lies between 0 and pi. So there are all conditions given us. And alpha is alpha is 120 degree. So this is nothing but you are 120 degree, which is nothing but 2 pi by 3. And theta equals argument of z, where z equals the complex number x plus i y is constant. And it is a harmonic since it is imaginary part of the analytic function. Hence the solution is given by. So this is your this, this is a solution solution of your Laplace equation phi equals a plus b argument of z. For the first one phi 1 equals argument of z will be minus alpha by 2 and for the second one argument will be plus alpha by 2. So you substitute here. You substitute. So that will give you for the phi 1 for the first one which is equal to a plus b for the first one minus alpha by 2 which is equal to phi 1 and for the second one this uh, equation becomes a plus b 1 by 2 alpha which is equal to phi 2. So now as usual you are going to add these two you can get, get the value of a and b add and subtract as we have done earlier for the parallel plates. You add these two b b b this uh, b b will cancel you will have only 2 a you can get the value for a in terms of phi 1 and phi 2. You subtract this one by this one a will get cancelled you will get only b value. So we can get the b value and substitute here. Substitute here in terms of in terms of phi 1 on phi 2 a and b. So a is given as phi 1 plus phi 2 divided by 2 b is given as phi 2 minus phi 1 by alpha. So your phi of x is nothing but a plus b where argument of z. Okay. Argument of z is nothing but b value is given argument is nothing but theta so that's why you return as theta where theta is nothing but r tan y by x argument of z is nothing but usually tan inverse of y by x we know already we studied in earlier classes okay so this is for the potential in the annular region so all the three applications are very important these applications they come under <coughs> electrostatic potentials okay so now only one example we are going to uh, deal with very important example an electrostatic field in the xy plane is given by the potential is given as 3 x squared y minus y cube. We are going to find out the stream function. Stream function is the complex conjugate potential. Okay, stream function. And then find the analytic function. So, here it is given as phi is given. We are going to find out psi. We are going to find out gamma of, gamma of z. I repeat, real part is given you are going to find out the complex part and you are going to add these two that will give you analytic function. Is it okay? So real part is given. Real part is nothing but your potential, equipotential which we studied in electrostatic fields. So phi is given. Phi is given as 3x squared y minus y cube. You just differentiate with respect to x. So that will give you 6xy minus 0 and d differentiate with respect to y. So that will give you 3x squared minus 3y squared. Is it okay? Simple. 
Now we know that uh, d psi can be written in terms of differential, exact differential function as partial d psi by dx, dx plus d psi by dy, dy. We know already this. Where psi is the comp uh, complex conjugate of your phi. Okay. Now we know that we just now we have found out d phi by dx and d phi by dy. Now d psi by dx according to cos Riemann equation, d psi by dx is nothing but minus d phi by dy. What is d phi by dy here? 3x square minus 3y squared. So minus of that will give you minus 3x squared plus 3y squared. Minus 3x squared plus 3y squared. This d dx is here and dy dx is here. Now what is uh, d psi by dy? In so d phi by dx. D phi by dx is nothing but 6x. So 6xy dy. It is in terms of now d psi. Okay. Now I am going to combine these two terms. These two terms like this. I can write this term like this. And this can be combined as differentiation of 3y squared x. What is differentiation of 3y squared x? You are going to keep this as constant. You are going to differentiate. Plus you are going to differentiate this. You are going to keep this as constant. UV method. D of U comma UV. D in bracket U comma UV is nothing but. You are going to keep U as constant. You are going to differentiate V. So U D V plus V D U. Something like that. So I am going to keep this as constant. You are going to differentiate this. Okay. What is the answer? It will be. 6y x see 6y x dy. I am going to keep this as constant. Differentiate this. You will get 3y squared dx. Simple. So these two terms combined together, we can write this as as differentiation of 3y squared dx. Is it okay? Now left hand side is d side. You just integrate on both sides. Left hand side is d side. Integrate on both sides. So integrating on both sides will give you minus 3. x squared answer will be x cube by 3 integration of this will be d and integration will cancel you have 3y squared x and integration constant is nothing but c so this is what we have found out the complex function of phi this is nothing but psi psi is the complex function of phi so psi is given as 3 3 get cancel 3y minus x cube plus 3y squared x plus c this is nothing but you have same function so we have found out one What is uh, analytic function? Analytic function is nothing but a complex potential. Analytic function is nothing but a complex potential, which is a combination of equipotential and streamline. Lines of force is nothing but streamline here. So you have phi is given as this. Your psi is we have obtained just now. So your phi plus psi, phi plus i psi. So your phi is here, i psi is here. Is it okay? Now. We can simplify. We can modify and simplify. So this can be written as minus i x cube, correct? So 3 x squared y I have written here. This can be written as 3 y squared x this term, and this can be written as minus y cube plus i c. Okay? I can pull. I can pull i out. Here i is not there. I can insert. Okay? I am going to pull minus i out. So minus i x cube. You multiply minus i this i. Will give you i squared minus one. I do one minus is there, so plus c plus three x squared. Is it okay? Similarly, minus i multiplied by minus three y squared x will give you minus minus plus. So you have plus three i. Similarly, other term also. Okay, minus minus plus i squared will be minus one, so minus y cube plus i c. So this can be written as a plus b whole cube. That formula. So minus i. X plus i y whole cube formula plus i c. So what is this one? This is not what you are using. So f of z equals minus i z cube plus d, which is nothing but your analytic function. Can it out? So now we are going to have uh, the discussion on complex potential for heat problem. So this is the final one in this chapter, heat problem. and of course we know we have studied already this uh, equation heat conduction equation already studied in uh, first year uh, undergraduate in physics where k is the thermal conductivity suppose when heat flows in the solid and there will be a thermal distribution and uh, heat conduction per unit area is given by this formula q equals 
minus k dt by dx into t. Okay, dt by dx. This t stands for the temperature. X stands for the spatial part. Okay, spatial part. And what is this dt by dx? Gradient of temperature. So this is called the gradient of temperature. dt by dx. So q equals minus k dt by dx into t. Just to bring this t to the left hand side, that will give you q by t, which is equal to minus k dt by dx. What is this one? This is nothing but heat plus across the surface, which depends on the material. Of course, it should depend on only on the material. For the 2D problem, okay. For the 2D problem, Q X. Suppose if we consider this a slab, heat heat is conducting from one side to another side. We will just consider slab. And this is for the 2D problem. Then Q X is given as minus K D T by D X D T. Q Y is given as minus K D T by D Y into T. Under steady state condition, your del T is del square T equals zero, which we are going to see now. And this can be written as a complex potential, as we have seen already. So your F of Z equals Q, which is the real part, Q of x comma y, which depends on x comma y, plus I y x comma y. So which is analytic throughout F of Z. And this is known as complex heat potential. And this is known as heat flow lines. Heat flow lines. Together, what we call this as complex temperature. Okay, what we call this as complex potential. In earlier, here it is complex temperature. Earlier we studied about complex potentials, correct? So here it is in heat problem. So that's why it is the combination of complex heat potential and the heat flow lines. Okay. Now we have just to differentiate. Just to differentiate. Okay, we are going to differentiate. So that will give you this is the this is the original equation. We are going to differentiate. That will give you dQ by dt, which is equal to minus k. I can write this as del square t gradient. Del square t differentiate. So that will give you d. That will give you d square t divided by d x square. That is nothing but your del square t. And for the steady state condition, this becomes zero. And minus k del square t equals zero. So that can be written as del square t equals zero. Under steady state condition, this becomes zero. So zero is equal to this. So this comes out as del square t equals zero. So Laplace equation equal to zero. The solution must be your complex temperature. Complex temperature. Solution is equal to your complex temperature. So in two dimension, this can be written as d square t by d x square plus partial d square t by d y square, which is equal to j. Okay. Any doubt? So that is the end of uh, the applications of complex number, so which you have studied already. We discussed about uh, two potent two applications mainly. One is on electrostatic potential. Another one is on heat problem. In electrostatic potential, we discussed three main applications. One is about uh, parallel plates. Then another one is coaxial, and third one was annular annular plate. Okay, all the three things they bring out. The real and imaginary parts of an analytic function which satisfy Laplace equation and Cauchy-Riemann equation. Okay, that is the end of the second. Thank you, students. We will see you in the next class. Bye.